Please don't get slimed. Please don't get slimed. Please don't get slimed. Today's video review, we're going to be having a look at the diamond select the real Ghostbusters. This is Slimer. One of the resident ghosts of the venerable Sedgwick Hotel in New York City, this focused, non-terminal, repeating phantasm, or class 5 full roaming vapor, haunted the 12th floor for years and was known for to most of the hotel staff. However, when his activities became more brazen, possibly due to the attempted incursion by Gozer the Gozerian, the hotel manager was forced to call the Ghostbusters. After Ray spotted him eating from a room service cart, the little spud slimed Peter before holding up in the hotel's ballroom. He was eventually trapped, becoming the Ghostbusters' first capture, but he was later released from the containment grid to become the Ghostbusters' unofficial mascot. This seven-inch action figures based on the animated series The Real Ghostbusters and features multiple points of articulation as well as accessories and diorama parts. It was designed by Yuri Ming and sculpted by Gentle Giant Studios. I'm going to go ahead and measure him. I just quick one quick correction to what I said at the opener of this review. The figure isn't seven inches tall. In fact, he's a seven inch scaled figure. In other words, the figure as a whole, if you count like his display base, for example, which I have to just for the fact that that's the only way that the ghost is going to stand. The figure actually is 8.2 inches high. Now that will vary depending on how you adjust the neck. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. The figure is in 21 inches or 21 centimeters converted. But if you want to just know the stats, the 411, say for example, just on Slimer, well, we will try to do that as well. Stop the Ultra Mesotron right there. Just the figure, nothing else. No bells, no whistles, no display stand. Slimer just on his own is three inches high. That's not very high at all. Centimeters, that works out to be 7.8 centimeters tall. And then some size comparisons to the other Ghostbusters team. Because after all, Slimer is part of the Ghostbusters. We are going to bring in Egon. Let me just adjust his proton wand. And we are going to bring in Winston. Pardon my, pardon my hairy arm. Putting the figures side by side. Let's actually see if getting the feet to stand properly on Winston. There we go. They do have a bit of a tough time standing. Usually I have the problem more so with Egon than I do Winston. Stay right there, buddy. We're almost done. We're almost done. Just got to show the viewers. There he is. There's the size comparison. Uh, yes, the Ghostbusters are exactly the same size, same mold. Slimer is very drastically different. This, of course, comes in handy using the clear display stand. If not for that, well, again, Slimer would be probably down here where he really should be up here. He gets a bunch of accessories, but most of the accessories are actually uh, attached to the diorama display base, or at least the part of the, uh, the fire hall. Here you get the top of the door the top corner to be exact it's not really much you can do it do with it because if you're not collecting these all nine series so far which i haven't i kind of took a break where i was picking up the retail releases that unfortunately didn't come with their display bases or their diorama pieces so ultimately i just sort of dismissed the fact i was ever going to really put it together which then unfortunately means if you pick these up at comic book stores, you're going to get accessories or you're going to get these component pieces that you're not really going to do anything with. Going back to something we had looked at, the accessories, one of the diorama pieces that came included with Winston was his hook and ladder. Now, the top here, you could either have it displayed with the hook and ladder, which I'll slide in for the time being. See, there's, a, there's like a little groove here. I guess it doesn't really even slide along the roof. It just sort of snaps, snaps in place like so. You could either have that along the top if you want to do the full fire hull accurately to the way it looks in real life, 
or you could just like leave this off altogether and you know just have it as the regular ghost uh, fire hall either way unfortunately i'm not going to be able to build it because i wasn't diligent enough to get every single figure as the comic book store releases that would all come with their corresponding diorama pieces and either way even if i did anyways i just wouldn't have the space I wouldn't have certainly had not the display display base for the top of the rooftop, which was the first sort of bunch of figures. And I certainly would not have had space for the fire hall either. So that's where that puts us. Further adding to that, you get all these extra little snap together pieces, which will, of course, play heavily more into the construction of the fire hall. But unfortunately, I don't we're not going to be building it on this channel. And you just get a bunch of kind of clips and did these little triangular pieces. I'm not really sure what specifically they're for because again, I'm not really planning on building it. So I've got all these little extra pieces in the meantime. Slimer has a couple of faces. We'll talk about those in a second. Um, I wanna talk a little bit also about his display stand. Now the display stand, we've seen these get released before. Diamond Select has done these display stands before. Unfortunately, I find like they're very loose. I had to go back in with a screwdriver, my t trusty little screwdriver, and tighten a lot of these screws. You may find yourself frequently going back and tightening the screws on some of these, because as the figure is a little bit more heavier, when you're attaching him, this little peg attaches to the hole on the back there, and it supports him, but unfortunately, long term, it's gonna cause the screws to get loose again. Um, one, one way to fix that is you could certainly take these apart, take that apart, take this off. If you want to have it a little bit lower, you could just angle this up and attach this. If you don't want to, again, have the full length. This is something a little bit more slimmed down, but at the very least, because it doesn't have all the extra knuckle joints to it, it also means it's not going to get as loose. It's a little bit more easier to manage, which is probably going to be how I'm going to display this figure. I'm going to display him with a lot less of the joints, just so he kind of keeps himself together a little bit better. And it also means that I'm not going to have to keep adjusting the screws. Okay, one comparison I wanted to do, and I'm going to put that just to the side for the time being. Where'd Slimer go? Oh, don't worry, he's right here. He's not going anywhere. I wanted to bring in the Slimer that I had from the movie Ghostbusters, because I'm sure somebody would probably ask me, is it using the same mold? It is to some extent. The torsos are really what carries over. I actually would have thought more of Slimer would have carried over, but you'll see that his arms are much skinnier. The animated counterpart to the movie counterpart are much slimmer than these arms here. In fact, these are almost more like human arms, as he should be, like, because he's a, a ghost. Well, he's based on a deceased character. I have the old ones, right, the uh, face sculpt right now that just has the, the little sausages, little hot dogs sticking in his mouth. So we'll pop that out. Let's grab, I've got a whole bunch of these on the side here. Let's grab this head sculpt because it just makes a little bit, looks a little bit more accurate. And there's the two Slimers. While this one here is certainly more movie accurate, I love the design of the animated Slimer. Always have, always will. And uh, Diamond Select looks, I mean, they. for any debate there could be made about the real Ghostbusters characters not, not looking a lot or close enough like their cartoon counterparts, I think very little argument could be made that this Slimer does not look like it was just simply pulled from the screen. Its accuracy level and the coloring is like dead on, no pun intended. I just did want to show you, though, the comparison between the two figures. They plug in the exact same way. Everything is on them identical, even the removing of the heads. Um, I can take this one off here, for example, just to, just to have a little bit of fun. And just to show you, I can put the cartoon Slimer head on top of the movie Slimer body. Somebody laughs in the background and says, you silly. You're such a silly guy. I am a silly guy. I like to be silly when I can. So that is the movie Slimer. I mean, we've already extensively looked at him in a previous review, so I'm sure he can go off and continue to haunt. In the meantime, let's have a look at this Slimer. He does come with three various heads. The one that's currently out of, when you get him out of the packaging, this one has the, the one with the tongue sticking out. 
And again, it looks exactly like he did. I mean, I almost expect to see this guy on a box of the uh, Ecto, was it the Ecto Cooler? The little uh, high C uh, Ghostbusters drinking box, which came out for a very short period of time recently. And unfortunately, I never got my chance to grab one. Um, kind of looks like, kind of reminds me of that. That Like for most real Ghostbusters package, you know, cross-promoting products, this is usually like the Slimer that they seem to go with. But there's a couple of other variations. One quick look at his face. You can even see like the tonsils right at the back there. That's definitely shows the care that they put into the details on this guy. Anyways, popping him out, the head out, very, very easy to remove. There's nothing that, like there's no friction necessarily. You just put lining up a shape to a, to a slot. I suppose this one does put a little bit extra stress when you want to put this one in place. Just kind of snap this one in place. This one gets a little bit more finicky. There's kind of regular Slimer head. And then he's also kind of more angrier head sculpt. You want to see that one? Okay, we'll see. I'll show you that in that one. Pop that one out. And then we'll just replace it with this one here. It's that certain, certainly that initial putting them in place. The first couple of times you do it, there's going to be a little creaking and squeaking and sighing as you're trying to get that all in place. But after that, it becomes pretty easy to get those back into place. I think of the all the head sculpts, let's see if I can grab all of them here with one, two hands. There we go. There's the three different head sculpts. Probably go with either one of these as my go-to Slimers. Almost dropped the head there. This one's okay, but, uh, you know, for just a fun, light-hearted Slimer, I don't know if I would ever display him with the angrier head sculpt, but I appreciate for the fact that Diamond Select would include it. Let's pop that out. I'm going to go with this head sculpt now for the rest of this review. Pop that in place. Oh, there we go. Uh, again, that body being that it is just reused from the one that we had gotten before, still looks quite good with this lighter lime-colored green working for Slimer. His arms are much skinnier than the uh, the movie Slimer as well. Uh, you'll also notice too, or you will notice once I bring it in, Slimer's hands from the movie has four fingers and a thumb. Slimer from the animated series has three fingers and a thumb. Just want to just mention that. The head sculpt, like I said, is absolutely gorgeous. The coloring is dead on. I keep saying dead on, but it's quite accurate to the way it looked in the series. Love the head sculpt. I'm sure they must have had some intentions then when they made the initial Slimer for the movie that they were going to use the same mold. Maybe they had this planned, I'm sure. Uh, they were going to use the same mold for the Slimer. Now, the Slimer up at the top here doesn't have as many texturings as the lower half does. It could certainly be attributed to the fact that the movie Slimer has a lot more sculpted details, like the crown of his head, for example, the wrinkles on the sides of his face, that it more seamlessly goes to the rest of his body. Whereas Slimer here, much smoother up at the top, a little more coarser and bumpy down below there, but it still works quite well. I mean, they could have probably removed some of the bumps, but again, I understand that the company would want to use as much uh, of the existing mold without really having to go in and, and retool it. So that's perfectly fine. I mean, they kind of make up for the fact that his arms are on that kind of same bumpy level as the rest of his body. So it kind of looks like this should all be the same character. Posability on this guy, now he doesn't have a lot because really his head isn't going to do anything. His body isn't really going to do anything. Uh, but his arms, you can rotate the arms, but you got to be kind of careful because when you're removing the arms, they're really stiff. Because it just feels like so much of his shoulder is rubbing up against other things while, while you're moving it. Um, the arms hinge out, as you can see there. He does have a bend in the elbow. There's that hinge right there. And the arms also rotate. He has the same similar hinge happening with hands. I guess in some ways you could, if I just rotate this around, rotate that around, rotate this around, you could kind of have it as if he's holding his stomach, like Slimer's a little hungry. And I guess that would lend itself better to having the alternate head sculpt. So once again, we'll pull that back out, pop this one back in. I do like this one as well. He can pretend like he wants to eat, like he's hungry. His little tummy is growling. 
Um, that's really all the posability that you're going to get. I don't really expect there much to be more than this. One thing I'm happy with is the fact that Diamond Select kept the colors cartoon accurate. I mean, there's a couple of ways of slimers have been released over the years. Some companies favor going like a translucent kind of slime uh, green. But I think keeping them to the most cartoon accurate colors as they did really makes this Slimer stand out and stands out in a good way. It still works well with the other Ghostbuster characters. I don't feel like the real Ghostbusters themselves now all of a sudden stand out like sore thumbs. Even though the Ghostbusters, these ones for example, still look a little bit more realistic, I think they still work well with Slimer. I don't feel like, like if I'm putting them again side by side with them, Again, looking forward to getting myself eventually Stans and Vankman. I think, again, like these work well still with the fact that Slimer in the middle, admittingly so, looks much more cartoony than the ones, than the characters on either side here, the real Ghostbusters on either side here. One thing I said right from the beginning with the real Ghostbusters line from Diamond Select was I think the ghost is going to be what defines this toy line. So far, I'm happy with the real Ghostbusters, but I'm really excited for what they're going to do with the ghosts themselves. I hope that their dedication to what they've done with the movie figures is going to be the same dedication that they're going to put into the real Ghostbusters line. For as great as the Ghostbusters are, you got to admit, the one thing that most people remember from the Ghostbusters cartoon is the incredible designs of the ghosts themselves. And I've listed some already in the previous reviews of the two figures, so I'm not really going to beat a dead horse again by listing off some of the ghosts that I'd like to see Diamond Select release. Nonetheless, though, if any of the ghosts that we will hopefully get in the future look anything like the, uh, the work that they put into Slimer, I'm pretty happy and excited for what the future is going to be in store for us when it comes to the real Ghostbusters figure lines. Good news, though, is if you're interested in picking up the first wave, which technically this is still Series 9, and that's one thing that I, I wish they could have done where Ghostbusters was a step a separate and a new starting series instead of just simply calling it series nine and continuing on from the movie line for the same build pieces. Real Ghostbusters really should have had their own line and maybe as a build something, it could have been something different than what the other figures were already currently building. I understand for that the scale of the things that they wanted to build that of course, numerous figures had to be released and that's the reason why they tied in the real Ghostbusters because it could be more figures and then therefore more diorama pieces to build the much larger sets. Still though, just my own personal opinion, I wish that they, the Ghostbusters, the real Ghostbusters, could have been its own separate series. But either way, that's just some side just jabbering on my part. Either way, I'm really happy with how these figures have turned out. Like I said, if you guys are interested in picking up this first wave, they're currently available in comic book stores with the second wave coming real soon. And of course, I'm going to be having a look at those when they come, uh, when they hit the uh, comic book store shelves. Either way, today we were having a look at the Diamond Select Real Ghostbusters, and this was Slimer. Loving this Slimer. Actually, I like this Slimer even more than I like the movie Slimer, but it just so happens I really like the design of this Slimer. Anyways, really done a bang-up job there, Diamond Select. Fantastic work on this little slimy spud. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other reviews of the Diamond Select Ghostbusters figures, there's a whole playlist for that. If As well, if you haven't had a chance to hit that little subscribe button down below, what are you waiting for? More videos will certainly be coming your way, and while you're also at it, Make sure you hit that bell notification. I know, so many people keep talking about the bell notification. But until YouTube figures out what they want to do, bell notification will be one way that you guys can ensure that you never miss out on future videos that are coming onto this channel. So make sure you hit that little subscribe button if you haven't done so already. Make sure you hit that bell notification if you haven't done so already. And I'll make sure I keep bringing videos to this channel so there's always going to be something for you guys to watch. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.